Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, I guess we've We've got some major, major issues here facing us from a from an international standpoint, even from a local standpoint. But I've uh, what I've done is that I've gotten several individuals that are going to be we're going to be discussing some issues that are pretty relevant uh, as as we as we as we venture into some of the issues that we're going to be talking about. Naturally, the the horrific uh, shootings and killings, if you will, up in Paris, and I mean, every, it's all in everybody's mind, you know, from the standpoint that they, they raise it. You've heard the word ISIS and this, that, and the other. But also in, um, it was in Nigeria, Kenya, in yeah. Kenya, in Kenya, that was another issue. I mean, that was just as much as horrific, if anything. That I think the numbers were running about 150 right. or so, or whatever. So we've got issues running around uh, this 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 country and this this world, for that matter. But also we have issues locally here too. And so what we're going to do, I, I, what I've done, like I said, I've got some individuals here that are sitting with me today. We're going to spend the first 30 minutes talking from the international level. We're going to talk a little bit about an issue like, for instance, um, uh, what is the Koran? Uh, what, what is, what is um, uh, you know, what, what's, what's a Muslim, if you will? And, and, um, and what is ISIS, if you will? I mean, how does all of that, how does all of that, how does it become relevant across the board? And then the second issue, well, the second 30 minutes, if you will, we're going to talk about our local issues because here locally here in Portland, in Portland, Oregon, there's a major concern about the shootings of late. And we're going to talk about that and, the, and, uh, and this impact and, and the impact that it has on, on, uh, on Oregonans, Oregon citizens, if you will, more specifically black citizens. I mean, right up front with the, our youth and our education system and the like. So sit back, relax, and and uh, and take note of what we're going to be doing. We're not going to open up any calls, if you will, but we're just going to be giving you the information, and we're going to educate you. And hopefully, we can get this all in um, in an hour's time. We're going to the first thirty minutes. We're going to talk about it from a national perspective. Then we're going to come local for the, the following thirty minutes. And if we need more time, we'll just go on and do another show, right in front with it. But anyway, joining me in this discussion, you, you, I'm sure you recognize Eugene Richard. In fact, Eugene at one point in time was sitting in my seat. He's done several shows along that particular line, and. And he's a well knowledgeable individual from a community standpoint, and even from a na from an international standpoint. And um, and then actually, there's there's the music that I that I'm very particularly into, uh, whatever. But any music? But I, I, I very much so. I, I won't go into that right now. Jazz <laughs> machine. Yes, sir. There, there you go. There there you go. go. Anyway, we got Eugene Richard. Welcome, Gene. Okay. Thanks. And then we got Dr. James Mason. And, and in fact, it was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, we just we were just we were in introducing ourselves again. We we've all kind of gotten a little age. I'm a little younger of all the. I've noticed it. We've noticed it. You've done well. Yeah, you've done well. Yeah, I'm younger yeah, than you've the, done well. the rest yeah. of you guys. But you should have <laughs> gave us the secret. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. but but we were at one point in time. You and I remember that, Mason. Absolutely. At the bank, remember that one? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, at U.S. Bank. We we we're gonna we're gonna, mm. to, we're gonna talk about that. That's, that's, another, another, that's another show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Omar. Uh, Omar, the electrician. You might have seen him before. He's been, he was he was doing the electrical stuff on housing and all this that that and the other but but he's wearing he's wearing as you as you know he's wearing another hat at this point in time. Muslim community center. Very much involved, very much involved in Sam. So we're going to be welcoming him and he's going to give us some more insight. And as you can see, Gene is, is wearing his piece too, and I appreciate that. He's a very. I'm just, I'm just matching with my my clothes. I know that. I know that it looks well too. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so gentle. humble. <laughs> so, gentlemen, uh, as you know, we, we, this is sort of like not an informal deal, but but we, we're trying to get a message across. People need to be informed. They need to be. They need to educate. And all due respect, folks don't read the newspapers anymore today. Uh, you know, people naturally some of them listen, listen to radio, but now it's a visual deal. We've all got smartphones now, and everybody's got their own media. And you know, you can say anything you want to say, and this, that, and the other. And it's pretty well horrific. And, and whether or not folks as a whole can. Can, can grasp that. We're really still in a, in a stage that, it, it's, it, where do you go with this piece? How are we, we going to get this stuff back together, this back together? So let's start off with something right now that's all it's very, we got a political, well, we got, we got a presidential election going at this point in time, and we've just recently got off, a, off an eight year, president. well, we got one more year with, with, uh, with the first African American black president 
uh, and, and a lot of folks don't understand what the difference in that piece aspect of it. But uh, that was horrific in its own self because that was a new something newish, and some people don't even realize it has happened. Really, mm. some people really don't understand what that was all about, if you will, and and, and the issues that we've had around it. Around. But we can talk about that part. But why don't we kind of like start off with the uh, everyone is familiar with the whole Paris and and, 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 and they kept making the point about the horrific deal about the, the the Muslims and this that and the other, and. Uh, uh, we just gonna jump right over there. Can we do, let's start off with defining defining the word Muslim? Well, can we do that? Can we start that way? We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. And okay. and 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 you know the the, the definition of 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 uh, Muslim is a name that was uh, divine and revealed to Muslims worldwide, uh, and it only means entire submission to do the will of God, mm-hmm. and when we look at the other the faiths it's all the same thing because every faith you know when you come into faith you come into faith to do the will of god and as and doing the will of god and the understanding is that it's all about promoting human development human potential and and communal growth um but our problem with uh what we see happening in 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 paris and other parts of the world which is non-islamic and and I think that after 911, most of us begin to realize that all Muslims aren't terrorists or you know militantly uh, uh, motivated. But when we look at the history, we have to go back and look at the history of of what has prompted these different generations to come into this warped understanding of what their role as Muslims in the world is. I mean, when we look at Muslims, you know, it doesn't come in just Arabs or, or African Americans. Worldwide, as James and I were speaking earlier, they would point out, you have Russians, you have Chinese, you have every group of people have Muslims living amongst them. Um, but what we're seeing, the problem today is a result of the area, the, the era that we are evolving out of, and that is the era of, of, of oppression and uh, some of those uh, other things that allowed governments to come in and try to establish the way that they wanted the world to be viewed from their understanding. And so we move out of the age of the Victorian age, which we know was an age of, you know, uh, 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 exploration turned into exploitation exploitation turned into what we see is is violent overthrows of governments that was meant to establish a means of getting at natural resources mm. and so it didn't have anything to do uh, with uh, a, a hate for Christians a hate for you know other people mm-hmm. what it was was all about exploitations and I'll just use one example well two examples really when we look at the issue of what has happened with the Palestinians and the uh, the Jews, okay? When we see how people were op- moved from where they had been settled for thousands of years and governments back that movement without just cause, and we see what is happening in, in, in that area right now with Palestine and the Jews, and we say, oh, we will never see peace there until they come to some conciliation between themselves about the establishment of a Jewish homeland and establishment of the Palestinian homeland. Big issue, big question. All of this is from that age of imperialism that we recognize as the Victorian age. Kings, uh, uh, big time rulers, ruling over the whole population without democracy, without a voice, and that kind of thing. And we can look at what happened in Iran that fueled what is happening with us right now. The Shah of Iran was kicked out of uh, Iran three different times by the people. And he was reestablished back into Iran by the U.S. government. Just using that for an example of these histories. So can you imagine then that the people kick him out, we put him back in, they kick him out, put him back in. The same time you have the Palestinian uh, situation with the Jewish community. So now you have two dynamics. The, the Iranian situation brought rise to the age of the Ayatollahs. The Ayatollahs were strictly religious, totalitarian-minded individuals. And so now, the United States then 
use Iraq in order to punish Iran for kicking the, the Shah out. And so these people fought a war in which millions of citizens on both sides lost their lives with no resolve. Mm -hmm. And so now you have generations of children who, who were part of that whole diaspora they still hold that grudge. They still have that mm. hatred. They still have that fuel. You have the same thing in Palestine and 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and Israel. Right. Being moved from what you your generations, a thousand years in that land, and then you're suddenly pushed off of that land and you you you're pushed to the worst part of the land. And if you say, Well, we have no way of, of making our lives, you know, more livable or anything else. And so you you create a situation in which Hatred comes out of that, not for the people, but for the environment that created that. Hmm. And so we're looking at the people and saying, oh, but we have to look at the environment first and say, what is the environment that created that? So we need to know our history. Now, when it comes to these ignorant worshipers, and I say ignorant worshipers because they say that they're Muslims, but they're not following the way of Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, who revealed the Quran to all Muslims, Okay. And so when we say that, what are we talking about? We're talking about five things here. We're talking about ignorance, insincerity, insensitivity, insecurity, and immorality. These people stand on those five things. They're ignorant, first of all, following things that is not in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet, his life, which is more important. You can't establish what the Quran says or what Islam is all about without knowing the history of the life of the Prophet. And then... And I will argue with anyone, well, I will debate with anyone how he lived and how he looked at the human being. He saw the human being as a soul that was sacred, that only God has the right. He gives you life and he, t and he gives you death as your challenge in this world. And then there's another belief beyond that about the soul and, 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 and its completion. So when I say ignorance, those ignorant worshipers don't have any idea of the life of the prophet because what they represent does not represent the way that he lived and the way he approached other civilizations. But hold on, let me, let me inject at this point in time. Absolutely. One, how long has that been communicated? It's, and and why, why we have such a divide? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if in fact, I mean, this is, this is historical. I mean, yes. the, the viewing public out here, just yes. very lay folks. Yes. They only know one thing. Right. Muslims are... A, Infidel, all kinds of weird things, if you will. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and all due respect from our person, and all due respect from, from a, a black community's perspective, they may see a Farrakhan uh, or, you know, or that kind of a situation or whatever. But they also see uh, the, the other side, you know, the, the shootings and this, that, and the other. And, but what you're saying is that this has been a historical thing. I mean, this divide routine. Who's fueling that situation to keep it the way Let me going? answer this, that, that question this way, Bruce. If we look at historically, just the United States, when I came into okay. Islam 41 years ago, okay. I didn't come into Islam for the religion. Right. I came into Islam because we were a militant body as part of a historical movement to get freedom, justice, and equality for the African American in America. Okay. Along the way of this path of militancy, I became knowledgeable yes. of the religion of al-islam and i saw that when elijah muhammad you know who made his mistakes and everything else but he was part of a historical line of militancy to establish a just and equitable life for the african-american for black people okay, okay. in america so that relates. we have moved from that era in this country to a conciliation between blacks and whites and an understanding of what the religion is all about. We created interfaith dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so people from the, 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 the pulpit to the lay people in their community began to understand because they see their leaders fraternizing with Muslims in America. Mm -hmm. And so together we have one voice about the right of every human being that there's no compulsion in the religion. We have free will, limited free will, and we have an understanding. We have Muslims in the Senate, 
I mean, in the, in the House of Representatives, yeah. at least two that I'm aware of, Muslims run for, for office and government. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was about to say something about the presidential <laughs> candidate. But there's been a great conciliation because we moved from militancy to an understanding and a share of this shared earth here called America. Mm -hmm. We understand we're given the opportunity to, to, to be recognized as a, as a people and who be recognized of the sacredness of every human being, right. whether Muslim, Christian, or Jew. That's right. Well, you know, I got that's it. education. Okay. And that was the point about ignorance. Okay. In other parts of the world, okay. they are still right. moving right. off of cultural prejudices right. between right. tribes and other nations and everything else. And so we're still catching the flack from that. But as Muslims in America who have moved from militancy to, 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 to Orthodox Islam, if I might, we abhor that because we don't want that imported here to where we have already gone through. My, I have a son that is in the grave as a result of my ignorant understanding, you know, of the religion of when I first came in. And so, you know, I'm not still angry about that. Because I know that the promise that has been given to me by Almighty God says that if you believe, there's no fear and there's no grief. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so when you begin to take that and move it forward, then you realize, okay, this is an era we have gone from, this era of oppression and, and all of this to now an era of conciliation here in America. And you couldn't find anybody more militant than huh. Muslims in America. We were the vanguard, yeah. really, mm -hmm. you know, right of, 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 of the problems mm -hmm. that we see around the world. It's as a result of the Muslims in America, Iran called the America the big shaitan. The big shaitan. The big, the big, sa uh, the big Satan. Satan. The big Satan. The big Satan. Okay? Now, did they take the hint and say, oh, look at those Muslims in America. They have no help. They have no outside help. They have no protectors. They have no allies. They have nothing. But we were successful because we trusted that God would bring us to this point. So when I see all of this happen, I'm saying, you say you believe, but you have no faith. And so you go about doing the things that is abhorred in this religion in the name of the religion. And so there's a difference between Muslim and worshiper. But, but but again, like I said, in, in, we're worshippers. I don't know what they call they say. Okay, but at, <laughs> but at the same time, the the point I'll bring up, like today, for instance, mm -hmm. you 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 tried to mention that, which I think would would really excite the folks to get into that definition, Barack, you know, Barack Obama. You see, okay, and, and, and right and, off yeah. the bat, uh, you know, in all due respect, America, in, in terms of majority, right off the bat, they said he's a Muslim. And they related that, if you will, to some of the other issues that are going on worldwide. But they didn't relate him to being terrorists. Yeah, but in all due respect, right, some Americans right. do. Well, I don't, uh, some feel that way. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just saying. We, yeah. we, 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 some of us, some of them do. As a result of that, uh, maybe some of the accomplishment that he's been, he's been, he's been under a lot of stress. But he accomplished a lot of things. It's not just, it wasn't just him. Dr. I think the, the, the takeaway for me is uh, when you talked about the ignorance, and I think that's mm -hmm. a big part. Is that. Mm -hmm. They meant that they're following something, but it probably isn't the Quran. It's, it's probably culturally influenced, absolutely, more than religiously influenced. Yes, right? okay. yes. And, well, and, and so right. the evolution for them hasn't happened yet, and yes. because of the culture, because of the totalitarian regimes, many of them inherited during mm -hmm. their life. Mm -hmm. Yes, you get this whiplash response, right? So that violence can be an alternative, right? Mm -hmm. I think, as you suggest, as you become more evolved in your knowledge of the gospel, the Quran, if you will, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you see a different, you're acting less culturally and more spiritually. Come on, brother. You Boom. hear what I'm saying? Boy. And so, so the problem that I see, uh, and, and I do a lot with cultural differences, is that we've painted Islam with a broad brush. Mm -hmm. And is it really Islam uh, fueling this behavior, or is it culturally or environmentally inspired? You know what I'm saying? Right. And in many of these parts of the world where people are desperate, right, um, it's easy to revert back to the environmental influence. They're not exposed to a more enlightened view of Islam or... So an interesting thing is uh, making sure that people are less ignorant and more tied to their gospel uh, might be an approach. And I think the thing you said also is really, really critical. Um, if you think about the early days of, 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 uh, of 
of, of uh, Elijah Muhammad and, and the movement, mm -hmm. it was also responding to an environment that was fairly unyielding, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. As time mm -hmm. has gone by, I think uh, a lot of my friends who were in, in the movement early on have evolved into something else. And mm -hmm. I think part of the gospel suggests that violence isn't the route. Mm -hmm. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, uh, uh, and so I think the thing that you said that for me that I that will take away is that it's a very, very broad community, mm -hmm. many of which aren't really inspired or informed so much by the Quran, but some leader that they have. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we, on the other hand, who are supposed to be more enlightened, shouldn't be painting this whole community with one brush rope. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and thank you, Doc. Uh, you know, and I want to use one exa another example. When the immigrant Muslims first came to the city and they found us, you know, Muslims and they... Now this black or white? Yeah, no, the immigrant Muslims. I'm talking about right. the Arabs, the particularly. Arab. Okay, right. Yeah. When I say immigrants, I'm talking about the Arabs. Across the board, not yeah, just I'm black. Yeah, no, not, not, not just black, because the Arabs were the first ones to come here and then after that, when, when, when the Arabs settled, then we start seeing the influx of the Romans and the Somalians mm -hmm. and these other. Okay. We we don't right. see many Chinese or Pakistani Muslims like we were seeing, you know, during that period. Mm -hmm. That first of group of, of 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 Arabs that came here, they came, and I think they maybe have had a hint of our militant minded set. Mm -hmm. They tried to recruit us in to their cultural differences. You know, historically, the Saladins of the war with Saladin and the Crusaders and all, all of that historical stuff that goes back to that Victorian age of dominance and oppression. And we went to a couple of their meetings and they was doing all of the screaming with all of this stuff, you know, uh, you know, because I'm <laughs> part of leadership. As soon as a break was taken, we got up and left. Mm -hmm. We said, what are they talking about? Man, we, we're not into that. <laughs> it took us about 10 years to get them to buy into, you know, that non-militant-minded attitude. Mm -hmm. And when they saw us putting the flag, the American flag on our newspaper, you know, they were like, you guys are disbelieving. What are you doing reaching out for Christians and Jews? You know, as soon as 911 hit and they saw how a, a government could really come down on non-American Muslims, mm -hmm. They say, oh, we think we better adopt the mindset that they have and find out what it is that has allowed them to live in America in peace as contributors rather than living as offenders. <laughs> now, make, make that clear to the viewing <laughs> audience. Now, now we're talking about the black and the white situation, right? There, there, there was another in, this entity was yeah. over here, but yeah. black folks were here. Yes. Right? With right. the flag. Right. right. With the flag, but they tried to. But, but, yeah. but, but yeah. when media came out initially, yeah. it was, i.e., the black issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, I'm, just, you I'm know, just throwing it out. Well, when we, when we began, we we were militant. We we, mm -hmm. we we were. It was a black movement. Yeah, it was a black movement. Yeah, it was a militant right. black right. movement. Right. Like I say, it. I came in for that, and along the path of being involved <laughs> in that, yeah. I found the spiritual and religious message that was actually in the religion of Al Islam. And I thank him, the late <laughs> Imam W.D. Muhammad, who was a member of the State Department for 20 years before he retired and his death, who brought us into the mainstream with a different understanding. And his first thing that he told us, he said, don't start imitating the Arab or you will be back in the same situation you just came out of. It won't be sustainable. It won't the, be the, sustainable. The, the problem with, with, with the violence is, is that it's not sustainable. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, uh, uh, it, it, it fuels the, the war machinery, if you will, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not sustainable. And so, what I would also suggest, uh, if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, in your early days, you were younger. Yes. <laughs> right. and, and, and one of the interesting things about you, Vietnam veteran. One of the things about you is, yeah. as you get older, right? I think you mature and you look for sustainability. You look for That's what's right. going to work, right? Absolutely. And yes. the interesting thing is, we got to share the planet. Mm -hmm. I teach mm -hmm. and, and and we don't want. Our things that we want in life aren't that much different. We want our families to be successful. Yes. We want our children to do well. We want our community to be safe. Right, right. It's not really right. rocket science, right? right? right. That's right. right. Uh, That's right. Uh, uh, what we want in life isn't all, all that much. And uh, and so for me, like I said, the interesting thing is when you're young and you don't know and you don't have and mm -hmm. you feel a sense of desperation, mm -hmm. it's easy to put ideas of 
I don't want to just say violence, but a, a quick remedy or a harsh remedy without thinking that if I win, you lose. And unless I eradicate you t totally, you might come back. So it's not sustainable. Right. The, the war thing is not sustainable. Right. And so you talked about taking conciliatory attitude. I think that's what we have to be promoters of in the world. You're absolutely correct. And the thing is, if we go back to that point, education. Because I, mm. and to this day, I am still amazed at how many Muslims that have come into this community who can recite the Quran yeah. in Arabic mm -hmm. and have very little knowledge of what the, what it is that they You're recited. Talking about black folks. You're talking about black folks. No, I'm talking about the, the Arab population now the Arab who, who are create who where we see a lot of this. We don't see Pakistanians involved in this. We're talking about mostly the Arabs, the the, the, the Iraqis, uh, the Iranians and, and and I'm not trying to, you know, make it sound racist, right. But many of the children in the classes and I mean they were we were we were African Americans. Right. Romans, Somalians, Pakistanis, every nationality at that masjid at, at 3801 Northeast Martin Luther King. So mm. I had an opportunity to sit with them for over 25 years. The children can recite that those different surahs in the Quran, boom, boom, boom. And then you, when you, the, there's no discussion beyond that in the same way. What are we talking about here? Come on, team. you know yes, yes. how does the Quran approach mankind? Mm -hmm. You know how does yes, how does the Quran lift mankind into his full potential? How do you live it? How do you live it? That is not part of the Islamic study, and that education is what is missing in the Islamic world right now amongst these youth, and so they are romanticized by this whole thing with uh, with the, the ISIS. The ISIS is one, is one of those old traditional stories that come down about how these Muslims were going to come down out of the West and they were going to liberate the world from the oppression of the non-believers and blah, blah, blah. And that lore has only grown mm. with, the, with, the, with the Internet. Mm -hmm. And so many of these youngsters look at that and, yeah, that's right, I'm going to go. go. I'm yeah, going down. I'm yeah. going down, yeah. you know, and I'm going and join. But if you set one of them down and say, what was the life of the prophet? Huh? Oh, he revealed the Quran, and well, uh, he was and <laughs> that's it. Right. Mm. No critical analysis. No critical ever. nothing. Mm. And so, to me, I blame the the the. I don't blame. I'm just saying that the Islamic world's leaders mm -hmm. need to get busy and start educating the people on what the religion is actually all about, rather than this romanticized BS that they're putting out right now. And bring the populace, too. Bring the That's populace. Right. Bring I mean, both. Bring both yeah. at the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do we do that? How do we do that? I mean, we're it's, doing it it's, here. It's, as it's, as not in my, it's, not in my, it's not in my knowledge to tell you. If it, if it was, I'd be on the plane going back and forth. No, no, I do think it starts with compassion. I, I do think it starts with trying to understand what you were talking about earlier was the environmental context in which people live, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think when anyone is desperate, anything will work. You'll right. try anything. And when they don't see a future, right, right there's right, nothing right, to lose. Right, 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 and I think that's going to relate to the second half of the show to right, some extent, right? right, right. right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it, it helps that those of us who are in positions to lead and to teach and to inform need to do some of the things that you suggest to yes. help us understand who this group is, right? Yes. yes. Also understand what we might have in common with yes. them, right? Yeah. right so yeah. what becomes obvious for us in looking at the media and what have you is how we're different. Yeah. What isn't so obvious is that they have families too, Come right? On. They have destiny too, Come right? On. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the thing that you suggested is so powerful is if they only know how to recite the verse yeah. Yeah. and not apply yeah, the right, verse, right, right. they may not have had the, the, right, the spiritual right. foundation to move in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. They have not moved into the 21st century, and many of them are still patterning their lives from things that existed a thousand, fourteen hundred years right. ago. Right. You know, and so the 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 knowledge and their education needs to be brought up, and then the point needs to be made is, what is the ultimate goal of what you are trying to achieve? Yeah. yeah and yeah, how right. can we bring reconciliation? so that we can understand that and start you on a path in the direction of total independence, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not that they're just killing uh, uh, 
governments that they're at war with, they move into these towns and kill the innocent, the children, yeah, and everything yeah. else. And then yeah, they, yeah. you you tell me that. Then when it's time for prayer, oh, stop the killing. <laughs> you be on guard over here. We go in and pray. Mm. And as soon as we get done, then you pray. Mm. Then we go and kill some more of them stupid people over there. Mm -hmm. What kind of Islam is that? Well, you know, you know, it, 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 this, this, this is just a little tip of the iceberg, if you will, because that's why I started out with the whole idea of the president that we have with us. You know, it, it, had his name been Harold Johnson, we would be talking about uh, the Muslim peace. But then, again, that was an opportunity, if you will, to bring the issue up because people were concerned. He's a Muslim. Look at his name. He's got to be a Muslim. And to a certain degree, a lot of folks didn't agree, but, but I've always maintained that, uh, that no man's an island. What's the name of the Republican? What, what's the name of the Republican presidential uh, candidate who makes these statements? And you know, he's Dr. Uh, Carson. Doctor, yeah, Dr. Carson. Dr. Carson. Right. Now he may feel that he's accepted right now as a you know viable African American candidate. You know, to to step forward. But listen, you're going to have the same problem that Barack Obama had because we haven't addressed the issue of race. Oh, he's and then when you no, and when, no, no, and when no, we I, have I, the dialogue, I figured, I figured, yeah. no, he's, he's he's having it now. Okay, he's okay. Yeah, right, right. But, but yeah. yeah, but the dialogue of race needs to be simultaneous yes, with yes, someone yes, running for yes, the highest yes, office in the land, yes, so they see him yes, as a as as qualified right, right, as right, anyone right, else. Yeah, right, because right. we are dealing with that dialogue of race, and so we don't see him as inferior-minded, slowful, exactly, exactly, you know, exactly. incompetent. Deceitful or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. look, guys, we got it. We got 30 minutes. We've already been in 30 minutes. Like I said, I can see us. We're going to have to have this. This is about a two-hour show, if you will, we're gonna, Absolutely. Point in segments, because that's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose is to educate and inform. And after the show goes on YouTube, it's going to be a, an additional education, if you will. So in all due respect, I'm going to welcome you guys back so we can spend more time because I know Gene's got some things he wants to say about this part. But we're going to go on and take a break and bring it sort of home here in Portland because we got some issues that we need to address if you our youth, criminal justice, on a number of issues that are relevant right here. Okay, hey, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. back to the segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. If you missed the show, you may want to just check out the schedule. You can pick it up on YouTube on the Oregon Voters Digest, okay? And uh, so now we're going to go into the second half, and we're going to sort of bring it home. We're talking about the the, the, holy, the, 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 the horrific issues uh, uh, that are in Paris and all over, all over the country, for that matter. But we're going to bring it back home here. We've got some issues here in, in the Portland metropolitan area in Oregon, but Portland maintained the uh, which is sort of recognized as where the African-American community exists, if you will. And there are many issues that, as a result of that. I mean, we've got um, the shootings that have, of late. That's our horrific piece right now. Uh, young black males, uh, and, and they, they've identified them that way, gang members. And whenever you say gang, it's black automatically, but realistically, that's another education piece mm -hmm. that we need to talk about. As far as I'm concerned is that uh, we've got three segments within our society. We've got the initial segment, which is phase one. That's the youth area, where you basically learn the issues and whatever, and then you get the best education there is, and whatever you consider the youth during that particular time in those formative years. At the end of that cycle, normally you're an adult. Normally we use the number 21 or something of that nature, then we're an adult. And then, then we go through up to the point we say about 70 years old, senior citizen. 
So that middle section is the one where you have to go to work. Yeah. You have to yeah, eat. Work, you have done. to eat, and you 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 got to. If you don't eat, if you have no way of eating, you're going to be in that criminal justice system. And then hopefully we got some. But my point is that you're eating in this area here, but on both of these other ends, you've made it to you made it to the homeland. If you got to be 70 years old, you shouldn't have to be worrying about a roof over your head and the medical and food and this, that, and the other. But my point is that that second that's the segment we're talking about. And the concern I have is in regards to the with the whole issue of the uh, of the, the this issue of gangs and that that direction aspect of it. If they're in this area over here on the front end during those formative years, they're youth. They're youth. Now, if they do all these different kinds, of, they're still youth. But if they carry over as an adult, then it transfers into an adult. Mm -hmm. And then you handle it that way. But you just can't keep calling them youth because they have no chance. And all of a sudden, they, they, they become not only a distraction, but it's a hindrance now on this issue here. These folks have to be, uh, 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 i.e., geared towards eating. Mm -hmm. You've got to work. In this section, I want you to have a job. I want you to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna throw that out there from the standpoint of saying, uh, you know, we, we we use the word gang members because, as you know, it's gang all the way up. It doesn't stop. I mean, a senior citizen can be a gang member. Well, they're cliques, right? The, yeah, go they're, on. They're cliques. They hang out, right? And and and, and we hang out, right? Yeah, right. And culturally, uh, for African Americans, if you will, and a lot of other groups, they click, right? right? Um, as, as teenagers, we would have hung out. On right. a Friday, Saturday night, sitting on someone's porch singing, yeah. right? <laughs> um, what you find now are kids are so exposed to market uh, influences. Right? They gotta have the shoes. They gotta have the gear. They gotta. They gotta. They gotta. No means to getting that. I remember back uh, uh, 30 years ago, uh, uh, maybe longer, when uh, the community was at its most vibrant point. You had employment programs for youth and adults, right? Mm -hmm. um, as those programs have died out, and as we've seen people experience issues in finding gainful employment, mm -hmm. if you have a family, you're going to provide one way or the other. Going back to the thing we said last segment, people feel a need to provide one way or the other for theirs. Mm -hmm. Not rocket science, that's, that's universal. Yes, so often you see young kids who see no way out, no way of getting the shoes, let alone milk for my baby. Let alone milk for a roof for my baby's head, mm -hmm. right? But I can engage in illicit activity and nickel and, my dime, nickel and dime my way through. Mm -hmm. And they see a few success stories where people have blown up as a result of engaging in illicit behavior. Yes. When in fact, most people that engage in illegal uh, pursuits end up making about minimum wage. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. That's and, and you have the risk of someone putting a bullet in you, yeah. whether it be your neighbor, yeah. someone who used to be your friend, or law enforcement. So, and the interesting for all of us, yes as we're all held hostage by this, mm -hmm. and arguably the investment in propping them up and preparing them for a gainful employment world might be cheaper than mass incarceration, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that once we start incarcerating you without redeeming you, when you come back, you're more sinister than yeah. ever before, yeah, right? right? right. And right. so we're almost held hostage by the fact that you went in for five years and you come out more desperate Right. Mm -hmm. Still mm -hmm. feel the need, need as an adult to provide for your family, mm -hmm. yeah. less means. And mm -hmm. so that's why things like Band the Box might be important for us. Uh, uh, actually doing a, a rehabilitation while someone is in lockup might be important mm -hmm. for us. And recognizing that it might be better to prepare you for college. You said Band the Box. For, for the, uh, making for sure the that, that, that when, you, when you check an employment thing, that if you have a crime that's not uh, related to your level of area of employment, then you shouldn't have that haunt you after you've done your time and paid mm -hmm. your dues to society. So we find that we're, we're actually creating, criminalizing a whole generation of young people oh. mm -hmm. that might come back to haunt us in numerous ways, mm -hmm. in numerous ways. Uh, what's interesting, uh, we both are, are work in the area of health, and a, a lot of communities are starting to recognize that the idea of gangs or gang activity might be a health issue, yes. right? Um, that has mm -hmm. a, 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 a act, actually impact on communities in terms of resources that could be spent on positive pursuits are now being spent on incarcerating you and monitoring you. Um, so it's it's bigger than Portland, absolutely bigger than Portland. And I'll go back to the educational piece. Mm -hmm. um, is your destiny to be a banger, <laughs> right? What does it mean to be a young African American male? Uh, should you participate? In, and I'm saying you should click up. We would have clicked up. We would have hung out as young mm -hmm. bucks, mm -hmm. right? But we wouldn't have banged. Uh, we would have probably cut grass, we would have probably washed cars, we would have probably mm -hmm. uh, uh, become uh, hopefully uh, 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 apprentices and, and electricians at some point in our lives. 
these young people don't see that and in many cases don't have that opportunity. But how do we get there? Doc? I think part of it is there? making sure that we are informed and we become advocates in our communities, advocates in community mm -hmm. at large. The other funny thing that I think happened to us growing up is someone pushed us in the right direction. Yeah. I know you're a good man, but I bet you were a knucklehead at one point in your life, right? Oh, very much. I got in the yeah, Thank you very much. <laughs> and so I got in the Marine Corps. And, and put you, exactly. Right? <laughs> we got to make sure that, that as we walk down the street that we're not so frightened by the youngsters. No. That no. we can put a bug in their ear about uh, pay your dues, do the right thing, yeah. and it will have, 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 uh, pay off at the end. If they don't see that or hear that from one of us, mm -hmm. The seed may never get planted. But you know, the thing is, now, now, now let's talk about solutions today. We, we know about what the issues are and the results right now. Where do we go from here? How do, how do we get to that young person? And I'll throw something out on the table for discussion. I can remember how I got here. I came here from Vietnam as a Marine recruiter. And, we had, and I had a tool called a smuggling. I went before the, I went before the, the, the court system. I, I worked very closely with JDH, mm -hmm. if you will and went through the court system, and, and that mechanism was that if you uh, went through the court system and, 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 and uh, the judge would sort of let's say, okay, fine, if you spent a couple years in the Marine Corps, boom, you're okay. And the Marine Corps and other services had that same opportunity. See what I'm saying? And then right up front with you, they had a, I, the ABCs now being taught again mm -hmm. because they're lacking now because of the, the sophistication. So, so my point is we had that mechanism, and during that particular time it was going good. I was doing it up in Northeast Portland. And I can see many of the successes and folks that turn that whole way. But now today, we don't have that mechanism. We don't have them. When I hear this stuff about boots on the ground, I still think about all those young people that are incarcerated. And that's across the board. That's not, that's not just talking about blacks and whites. I'm talking about across the board. They're all incarcerated. And then a lot of times, you know, they, as far as I'm concerned, they get released, but they say they do, this, do, you know, they do the crime, they do the time, but at least to what? Right. We got unemployment out here. We got folks who hadn't committed the crime. Yeah. So where did it get into the line? Okay. So the name of the game is that I, my my position now is that you shouldn't release them <laughs> until they meet the policy requirement. You have mm -hmm. to have a job and a place to stay. And then at one point in time in the institution, we had a situation where folks were being trained, going through the apprenticeship program. But then there was there was some pressures on the outside, like the trades and all due respect, they were saying, "Hey, you're taking my job." So as a result, they don't get that training. So I'm just talking about solutions. I'm just saying maybe they got boot camp, for instance, in the, in the institution. But the boot camp is not all inclusive to everybody. It should be inclusive to everybody. Yeah. So they can get all the bases. So I'm just throwing some things on here for discussion. But I'm talking about well, how do we solve the problem? Where you do know, we go? You, you know, if, 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 if I might, and again, if we go back and we look historically at when gangs and drugs became a problem. Yeah. The, the, the drugs were around yeah. mm -hmm. for years. I mean, when you look what was happening in Harlem, New York, and those areas back in the 20s and the 30s, you know, with the musicians, yeah. we realized then that drugs were available oh, yeah. because many of those musicians, uh, you know, may have used drugs and it, as, as part of their what they thought was their culture. creative culture. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the solutions is that and, and, and to, to, to your point, I think one of the solutions is that we need to really look hard at this whole thing with affirmative action. Oh, this whole thing with affirmative action. Because we're, 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 we're old enough to realize that affirmative action is what got me into the apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here's an angry young man come back from Vietnam. I got all of this on me. I'm going to join the Nation of Islam, this whole thing. But the opportunities was there. Allowed me, first of all, to say, hey, wait a minute. Now. I've got to, if I can just channel this anger, there may be an opportunity for me in this affirmative action program. Yeah. And we look forward to finding something that the government had opened a portal for us to get involved with in terms of employment, to be able to take care of those families and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we had less drugs and we had less gangs. You know, I look were, at a and gang. you were prior military too. Well, I was prior military, but I'm talking about for the okay. common guy that was out there. You know, a lot of guys didn't, didn't make the military, but went into these different programs as a result of affirmative action, because across the board, you had to allow that oppressed minority into the mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when they had when I had that view of the mainstream in front of me, then that was the direction, that was the path that I took. 
for you see my education, I, I saw okay. opportunity. Wait, wait, yes. Go Once ahead, you Doc. see opportunity and you have a future, there's something to live for. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. There's something to live for. Right. So no, no, no. We can't go drinking this weekend. Right. right. We, we right. can't go go engaging in illicit mm -hmm. activity. I have a future. I have something to live for. And so I think that's the area you were talking about. That's the area. Was, even though there were drug drugs aren't new. Dr no, drugs were here then, no, right? Right. Um, but the idea was, hey, you know what? If I go to school, I can do this. Uh, if you look at college enrollment at the time you were talking about, it was yeah. booming. Booming. It was yeah. on the ascendancy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you look for gainful employment, it was on the ascendancy. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Now we're seeing this, right? Yeah. And so, uh, and and if we don't know or recognize that I have something to live for, then why not let's go drink and drive? Why use seatbelts? Why not engage in risk-taking behavior? So what I see with a lot of young folks who don't see a future, mm. right? There's nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose. One of the things we found out and, and help uh, uh, understand this. One of the things that will reduce teenage pregnancy yeah. for women, young ladies, is if they see themselves having a future. Yes. Right? And so one of the things that we're doing, uh, have done, been done in public health, is making sure that you are inspiring young women toward gainful careers, college education, in which case, then I'm not going to engage in unsafe sex. I'm not going to engage in premarital sex. I'm not going to. So I think for a lot of the young folks that we see, they're responding to their environmental cues. They see no future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to lose. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's go sell drugs. Let's go rob somebody. Let's go hit somebody in the head. Right. Um, but what I think we're, we saw back in our era mm -hmm. was that there's a chink in the armor. There's a crack in the door. I can get through. I'm going to pull you. Right. Uh, let's leave. Let's leave this negative stuff that, behind. That. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But, and, you know, it, but it, again, it, it, again, it's the same age. Right? We had this this other piece about it takes a village to raise a child. Right. But then on this other piece, oh gee, I'm really good. I'm really good. Sorry about that, guy. That's your. It's your show. You can do that. Yeah, you can do that. No, the day, don't, the don't days are going to get me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there was a. You know, we had this piece about it takes a village to raise a child. But we we grew up in that particular era. But then on the other piece, I had this other piece. You had that same piece. I had this military. That was my village. So my point is that if you missed it here, in this other village, there was this other village that was mandatory. During those formative years, everybody had to spend at least two years. But, 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 don't, don't only, not only you, uh, I'm the son of a Marine, right? My, my dad was a, a, a gunnery sergeant in, in the Marine Corps in World War II, I right? when I first met you. Right, and so, so <laughs> what I think I, no, learned I, from, I learned from my dad, right, yes. Yes. was all the kids were his. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. right. But where I grew up, yeah. all the kids were yeah. his. And That's so right. uh, uh, back to our responsibility as yes. folks who've kind of matriculated a little bit through this system is we got to pay it forward. We got to pay it. Uh, uh, yeah. We need to invest in the young bucks yeah. as well, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And so we might only have an impact on one or two. And the, and, and the, the, the hardest thing about this, the word or the seed you plant now yeah. right. Right. might not right. come to fruition right. for five right. to ten years. Right. 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 But we right. still have to nurture that. We right. still have to germinate. Right. We right. still have to right. do our right. job. Right. 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 And I would say the reason we are where we are today was someone invested in us. Yep, very much Absolutely. so. And, yeah. and, and so whether society does or not, we have to make sure we're investing right, in these young right, kids. Right, right. They're, yeah. they're, they're ours. I, I agree right. with you. I agree with they're you. They're all ours. And when you also look at the dynamics, if we were talking about the African American in particular, when you look at the dynamics of what a minority is, yes. at the time when we had the affirmative action, we were the largest minority that was in this okay. country. Oh, yeah. Now, with the way the society has moved towards exporting jobs overseas uh, these 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 other critical changes in the society yeah yeah all of that now we see that the workforce has become primarily hispanic or mexican you know women were not part of the equation right i mean there was still the you know the i don't want to say oppression because they benefited from the good life that that the the, the majority uh, of of the citizens of this country, they benefited, but then the women have been pulled into the, the the work pool. You know, we have the Hispanics pulled into the work pool. You have the African American pulled into the work pool, and the pie got smaller. So well, now we all Americans, you know. Yeah, emerging, we're, small, yeah. emerging small business brings yeah. in white folks, yeah. white males, right? So but there's no the such pie, thing as a the, pie, the, 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 the pie for opportunity got smaller. And so the definition for who gets a slice of the pie changed. Yeah. Yeah. So the door to, to affirmative action closed yeah. and say, oh, well, we've made, everybody has an opportunity. But that uh, box that you're talking about was one, 
was you know he said okay well oh you were a criminal you can't you you're can't done. you can't apply for this you're, you're done. done you're done you know go find something to do they let the man out of jail you're talking about the incarceration they let him out of jail here here's fifty dollars good life How about it yeah you know those kinds of things and those kind of understanding but if you don't give us a tool to move forward it's like your brother say, well, hey, <laughs> you know, I can sell drugs and make minimum wage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every now and then. I may get a little overtime yeah. with yeah. something yeah. Oh, on my yeah. criminalization. Okay. But that alternative is a result of diminishing returns for those youth. And they. So, so again, we got about five minutes again. I'm, 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 think, I'm thinking about the what do we do? Where do we go from here? For instance, we said gangs. You know, I'm, th I'm throwing this on the table, for instance. Why, why don't we just say. Because that gang list, if you will, once you get on that gang list, you're done. You're done. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, you will hit that glass ceiling right off the bat. I'm saying, for instance, let's get rid of the let's word do, let's, do this, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go get back to the what we gang. did in the first segment. Talk to the interesting you. thing is that uh, uh, it's a minority of minority youth that do gang activity. The, the majority don't. That's right. That's right. That's right. The majority That's right. do the right thing in That's spite right. of what's out there. But why right. even call them games? Um, uh, well, I think the labeling is, 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 is problematic in the first yes, place, right? Yes, um, yes, yes. So my, my point is this, is that we need to understand that we, if we don't invest in our youth, right, right. we're going to pay one way or the other. Okay. How right? do we invest now? Um, education. Education. Okay. Employment but then, but training. We, but then if we got an education here, system uh, here, uh, it's, it's, it's a failure. Uh, what do you if, do? if we want to think of the African-American community, um, we can look at the employment data impacting this community. It's the recession level in a big, big, big way. Yeah. Yes, we yes. also have generations who haven't had sustainable work. Mm -hmm. So we need to probably go back to the 70s, 80s, where we're teaching people how to work again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we mm -hmm. had growing up, I would say, is we had a better sense of self, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, I grew up Come in a family back. where I learned as an African-American that I had these challenges. But I also had my role models in front of me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't going to succumb. So uh, I'll go back to the thing I said earlier. If we don't invest in them, we're going to pay. I agree. I agree. We're going to pay. Agree. We're going to pay one way or the other. I agree. And I'm going, and again, I'm going right back to what you're saying in regards to uh, the school, the education system. And I'm, I'm being very specific. We got Portland Public Schools. It's one of the largest schools, one, largest school district in the state of Oregon. And, uh, and, uh, and the majority of the schools outside of this particular area has voc ed. There's no voc ed in the largest school district in the state of Oregon and has the highest failure rate. And the highest job opportunities are in the trades. And you're constantly hearing this business about the, <laughs> this fact of the matter is we, we, we're losing, we're needing, we're needing more folks. My point is that we're not focusing in those, those kinds of areas. I mean, you, you know, I mean, so what do we do about that? we got an education system that's failing. So that's a fact. The numbers speaks for themselves. And then we come up with programs, but programs that do nothing. I mean, people are eating, but they're not eating in, in the right results, if you will. That's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. well, well, I'm, what do you do? What do we do I, I'm about encouraged that? by uh, what we're seeing in Portland Public Schools. I think they're focusing on the issue... Um, and, and, and I have a lot of friends and, and a lot of people that I value in those systems. I think we're all challenged. I, I think one thing would be sh for sure, one of the challenges that we have in healthcare is making sure that people are served equitably, That's right. right? We have the achievement gap in education, not just Portland, across the nation. We have health disparities in the health field, right? Yeah. Um, so again, um, I think that all of us have a role in perhaps being supportive of our school districts, being more uh, active, being more educated around voting issues and not just presidential elections. Um, I think we have to be more active in our communities. That's I think right. we can't acquiesce. That's and right. the other challenge is our community's been displaced. Come on. So wherever you are in the Portland diaspora, right, <laughs> we have to come back and advocate for our, our, our communities. We, we can't, we can't well, abandon that, them. Now you're talking about leadership. You know, it has to be, everyone has to come to the table. And we're all leaders. That's we're all, we're all potential leaders. leaders. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're all potential and, leaders. And, and the definition of, of our prior leadership, in all due respect, you know what I'm saying, they were eating in another aspect. I mean, I, I won't well, we need a, We need an African-American leadership uh, summit that will, that, that, that will start at the top because the majority of the, 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 the right-minded, right-thinking people are in the churches. And so the, the, the membership of the churches need to charge the, the, the ministers and, 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 and those people said, look, you need, we need to sit down in a group and look at these problems and collectively come up with a solution that we can begin to apply rather than trying to be the, the, the biggest church with the biggest denomination and this and this and that. 
that's out the that's out the door. You know, we we can't be better than the common man who's just coming out of the penitentiary. We have to embrace him. Teach. You know, as 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 tightly or as closely as we embrace that minister. That's right. Because they're at opposite end of the spectrum. He's in the best position to be able to offer assistance, and this one is in the most needed position for the help. Mm -hmm. So we're not addressing that in the church. Okay. And, and if that's where most of the good people are, if that's where the intellectual thinkers are, if that's where the, the wealth of this community is, then we need to galvanize, stop looking from help outside, to your point, and start developing this from inside amongst ourselves. And if we have that idea, you know, it's a God help those that help themselves. Come on, okay. All individuals are sacred. You, you said Every earlier, individual is sacred. Whether you know how or why. That's, That's right. right. Gene, you gotta right. Get, give me a last word here. Go on. Say something. I love you guys. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> I love you guys. I just okay. love you. I appreciate back. that. We appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, man. Well, like I said, we spent some time here. I think it's the tip of the iceberg. We got a lot of things to do. In fact, we did a show where we had, I had several ministers here. In fact, in mm -hmm. fact Omar was here. Uh, Pastor Hennessy was here. And uh, Reverend Hardy, Pastor right. Hardy was right. here. And, uh, but again, we need to have this discussion. And we want to bring them back to the table. Brother Omar mentioned human development. Perhaps that can be a segment for a human issue. development. That's, a, that's another mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. The health issue aspect of it. And we, need to and we need to Those define that things. better. Right. Because a lot of folks don't understand the health. You know, I get sick, but they don't understand about the other part. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Got me? So, Jenna, this has been great. Appreciate it very, very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Here. We appreciate that. Absolutely. And hopefully the viewing audience, you got uh, enough of this. I know it's small, but that's how you start. We've got to start right. somewhere. We've got to address the issue of, uh, of uh, the race issue still there, and that needs to be defined again, you know, and, you know, that's, that's just what it is. And that's what we're trying to do. Right. It's not about being anti-America. It's not about being America. We're all Americans. I don't even want to be called a minority. There's no stand animal. <laughs> let's, get, let's get down. I to the apologize. Bottom. We all have to eat. You all have to eat. And we all have to work. Not Bottom rocket line. Science. Not rocket science. You know what I'm saying? Rocket Not rocket science. science. So, folks, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care. So we just